I don't normally do unboxings, reviews or how-to videos, but because there wasn't much information about this product out there in the big wide world of the internet, I thought I'd have a go. It's the Procom PowerJet Fuel Controller. So these are the manufacturer's claims. Most fuel injection engines run very lean, and this is fine except for when demanding maximum power output on the track, especially when you have sports exhausts installed. Being able to simply adjust the fuel air ratio in those conditions would be wonderful, wouldn't it? What this accomplishes is that the ECU is told that the, the intake air is a little cooler than it is and the ECU will respond by injecting a fraction more fuel depending on the power jet setting. You as a rider will notice a substantially improved engine response when you twist the throttle. The neat thing is that when under load or constant load, the oxygen sensor in the exhaust will make the ECU correct the fuel air ratio back to stock. However, as soon as the system notices an increase in power, it switches from closed loop back to open loop and will correct the fuel air ratio by the amount you selected on the power jet. The power jet can be easily installed by plugging it in between the stock air temperature switch sensor, which is usually located somewhere on the airbox and the bike's wiring harness. Each power jet comes with the exact plug-in connectors and installation will normally only take a few minutes. Finding the air temperature sensor usually takes more time than plugging in the power jet. You can leave the power jet sitting under the bodywork somewhere as it's designed to be rugged and waterproof. After figuring out what setting works best with your specific engine exhaust intake combination, you typically don't need to adjust it anymore. So here's to my first unboxing video. Very simple packaging with no instructions on the box whatsoever, other than a warning that it's not their fault if everything goes wrong. So the makers have insisted that everything about this little module or kit is simple. And on opening, that's exactly true. The only thing inside this is the Powercom module with the cables. And the very first feel of it, it does feel like decent quality. Still looking quite simple, only two dials and one button. Not exactly sure where the 10 settings come in on this yet though. Now you have to order this bike specific to make sure that you get the right connectors for your bike. These connect between the air intake sensor on your air intake box and the loom, so it couldn't be simpler. You'll find the instructions on the back of the unit itself fairing and tank off so that we can get to the airbox, which fortunately on the Versus isn't really a big job. Removing the tank means two electrical cables to disconnect and the fuel line, which automatically shuts off when you disconnect it, which is really handy. On the Versus, the air temperature switch is right on top of the airbox, so it's easy to get to. So unplug the stock cable, unplug in the power jet. All the cables are male female, so there's only one way this can be done. Of course, before you do this, you need to consider where you're going to put the unit and where to route the cables. It needs to be somewhere where you can access it easily so that you can get to the controls and change the settings. In my case, it was a cavity underneath the seat. Though I have seen another review on YouTube where the guy strapped it to his handlebars. I've tried as much as I can to follow the route of the loom itself. Underneath the framework of the bike. And into a cavity underneath the seat right next to my dash cam unit. So with the bike switched off and the unit in zero mode, press the reset button and wait for the lights to flash. Once the lights have run through their test mode, one of the lights will stop at an indication point. Turn the small dial with a screwdriver to the point where the last LED was lit. 
And that is your power jet set and ready to go. Rebuild the bike and see if it works or even if it starts. Ticking over nicely, so in the zero or off setting, it doesn't seem to have made any difference whatsoever. <clears throat> okay, well, here's to test out the power commander. Idea right now is to go just for a short spin and test it out in each setting. I suppose the one thing I'm always worried about with doing mods like this is whether or not you plug something in and the bike just doesn't work. Then you have to go to all the trouble of dismantling it again to remove the bloody thing. So at least we're working. And the thing I've always found with the Kawasaki is there might be a, an overtaking opportunity coming up ahead and you see it and you think, yeah, I can do that, but then you think, well, I haven't quite got the power to get out of trouble. I'm in top gear now, which is about the same. No real changes there. So we're now going to put it on to first setting, setting number one. <laughs> I might notice the difference. So I'm in top gear at 5,000 revs. Is it pokier? Is it pokier? Yeah, possibly. Right, well I'm going to pull over here and knock it up another stage. Now to knock it up to Number two. Is there a difference? Yeah, there is. Now we've gone up two notches now. So the first notch is the stock setting. The second notch is like a circle, whereas all the others are like white little dots. That first, so the first one, which is the stock, didn't really make any difference, as it says it would. Second one, maybe, difficult to tell. We're now in the third position, which is the first white dot. And I felt it then. Yeah, definitely notice a difference. Definitely notice a difference. So one, two, three, we're now on the fourth, if you include the, the no setting whatsoever. Okay, still ticking over at a thousand. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's definitely more response. 
definitely. I think this is higher than the other guy did. So if we go zero, one, two, three, four, you got five and six left to go. What I'm noticing, and I've just looked down now as I'm accelerating. I'm reaching 7,000 revs a lot quicker than I was before. So that acceleration is really giving us something. I suppose there's only so far a device like this can take your bike. Every bike has its limitations. Top gear, have I got anything? I have. Yeah, second to last one. the real test would be to switch it back off again at the end of this. How am I going to do that? No. Just getting up to that speed quicker now. Like I was saying earlier, noticing the revs. Getting there much, much quicker. I mean, normally I'm accelerating at about 6,000 revs and changing gear. Whereas I'm not now, I'm going up to about 7,000 revs and changing gear. That's just my kind of, my style, my muscle memory. Just the way I ride. And that little gadget has, has made that little bit of a difference. They say it can increase power by 10% but I suppose without going into any mathematics that's probably about right so refuel and see what we get at our next refueling so the question I'm asking myself is now am I pleased about this. Is it worth £97? My initial impressions are, yeah, it probably is. I'm reluctant to jump around about it. I don't want to go singing and dancing. Yeah, would I sing and dance about this? Would I recommend it? Well, that I think is going to have to come after I've had a look at the fuel consumption. Yeah, this is a different bike now. Don't know what difference that next setting will do. I'm going to leave it in the setting it's in and have a look at the fuel consumption. Here we are a week later and 120 miles done. This is in setting number four. This is the record I keep of every tank of fuel I put in the bike, the mileage, fuel type, fuel costs, and the conditions that I was riding in. I know, I know, it's very, very sad, but it does help me diagnose problems with the bike. Here you can see that recently my average mileage has been in the high 40s or low 50s and I generally get better fuel performance on longer trips this test however has been done just traveling in and out of work so there have been short trips 
And with the temperature dropping significantly this week, I expected the fuel consumption to be in the high 40s. And keeping an eye on the fuel gauge, I expect this to come out as 47 miles per gallon. Whoa, that's much lower than I was expecting. 44 miles to the gallon. That's quite a big drop and that's got to be down to the power jet. It's got to be. There's no other reason for that. Despite the temperature being quite low, there's no way I would expect it to go that low. So my conclusion on this is that the Procom power jet does work. I've certainly noticed uh, an increase in acceleration. When you open the throttle, there's a much better response. But as with everything in life, there is a trade-off. And the trade-off here is fuel consumption. There's an increase, and I work it out to be about a 10% increase. So with that in mind, the power jet will be staying on the bike, but for my normal daily commute, it'll be switched off. And I'll only be switching it on when I go out, let's say at the weekend, for a bit of a fun ride. For 90 odd pounds, it's an easy modification to do and makes your bike a little bit more exciting than it already is. But for day-to-day -day riding, I'm afraid it's going to be switched off.